Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my world here on Facebook, Facebook Live. We are coming to you from the wilds of Montana. And I think I'm going to be blowing your minds today. So hopefully it won't hurt your brain too badly. Let's see if we can get some image up there. Supposed to be showing. Let's see. There it is. There we go. Great, great, great. Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. And Connie, you just click on the link. I'm gonna I'm coming at you right now, right here in the Facebook group. So hopefully you can see that. Yay! Okay, great, great. Here, let me come on and show myself. It's the beautiful mountains of Montana. So today I wanted to come to you about keywords because keywords are the things that help to sell our books. Now I'm a search engine optimization specialist, so I've been studying how keywords work for a very long time. So I'm going to try and not hurt you because <laughs> it can really become very overwhelming when we talk about keywords. And when you're doing KDP, which is an Amazon shop, it is a little bit counterintuitive about how you might think about how keywords work. So I'm going to show you some examples so that you can kind of get an idea of how to proceed when you're dealing with keywords for your back end. And I'm going to show you some resources uh, that you can go to very easily. Um, and many of them I've already talked about before. If you go to the unit section in, in our website here, let me um, put that up there. If you go to the unit section that's on the left hand of the website, and I believe on a phone, it's at the top on the top bar um, and you scroll down in unit four, I have a whole section on doing research. Of course, I've also talked about uh, doing keyword research in the lives, which I have saved down here, uh, which is at the very bottom in unit 14. So if you look at the research section, you can see there's quite a bit of things going on here, power of hashtags. I've talked about hashtags. I've talked about KDP categories. And so many of these things is a review, are a review of some things I've talked about before, but I'm going to go just a few steps farther. And if you are only just getting started in your book journey, this may be a little bit advanced for you, but since we're all on KDP now and we're not limited by the few words we were allowed on CreateSpace, I think it's really super important because keywords are really important in the Amazon universe because Amazon is basically the Google of shopping. So, I've based some of my research on a combination of things. One, I have an Amazon FBA account and keyword research is something FBA sellers talk about all the time. And now that we're on KDP, many of the same things stand true. So I've also watched other videos by other people. This is by the Mickelson twins. I've posted a link to that before and I can post it again. It's, I want you to be warned. They are R rated. <laughs> they curse, they drop F bombs and they don't care that you're offended. So there you go. But a couple of the things that I think is important to talk about is when they talk here in this video on how to optimize your keywords for KDP, in KDP, we have seven slots, and each one of those seven slots allows up to 50 characters, and a space is a character, and you're allowed 350 characters total. But this is the thing that gets many people 
because you don't need to repeat keywords. So anybody who's told you that you should use whole phrases and repeat those phrases over and over again really are not familiar with how keywords work. So on Amazon, they ignore the second iteration of your keywords. And so when people sit and stuff keywords into their titles, stuff keywords into, you know, uh, Amazon doesn't really look use your book description, but when you try and stuff keywords on your back end and repeat it over and over again, Amazon ignores it. So you're wasting space by repeating the word journal, 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 journal over and over again. Amazon doesn't look at it again once it sees it the first time. It's very sophisticated search engine-y stuff. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Amazon's auto suggest tool again and the tools that I use uh, that I've shown in uh, some of the other training and we'll I'll show it again because we have so many new people. I think it's important that you have these basic tools. And maybe I'll make actually a document uh, that has all these tools in one place. I think that might be helpful. Uh, the other video that I've watched uh, with some interest is Catherine Shelton, who owns Tangent Templates, which I have recommended many times. And she talks about uh, your keywords for CreateSpace and KDP. Now, she doesn't really go as much into depth as I would like it. And actually, in a research of what to put into the KDP seven slots, there's very, 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 very little information that anybody has actually shared. So this is really what is the crux of the matter. This is a book that I have that is a Bible devotional book. You'll notice that it, and this sells actually really well, You'll notice that there are no full sentences. There are no phrases. Let me make this screen bigger so you can see it better. Whoops, there we go. There's one more, there we go. And what I've done is, uh, because this is a Christian Bible study devotional book, I have used words that most people searching for such a thing would put into Amazon. Christian, Bible study, scripture, notebook, diary, King James, New International, translation, KJV, which is King James Version, women, woman, woman, men, teen, teens, couple, couples. I personally believe that you use the uh, plural of the words. Um, they are treated differently in Amazon, and I personally do it that way. Now, you'll notice I have, you are allowed 50 characters per line, so you have to kind of judge, eyeball judge, what 50 characters is going to be. Maybe I could fit a couple more on there. I'm really not going to spend time counting every single character. I know that I eyeball it, and I know when it's about this long, I'm about at the end of how many I can have on there. Um, Jesus, God, Almighty, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit. Again, all these things that people will put in to search. Um, minute journals, wisdom, mom, dad, Catholic, Episcopalian, obviously some of the biggest faiths, versus devotion, gratitude, prayer, family, Methodist, English Standard Version. Um, and you'll notice also I don't have words that are called stop words. I don't have A the, from, to, or any of those connector words because they're ignored by the search engines. So you don't have to use full sentences. So to get down into the meat of the matter, this is a really great resource right here on KDP. Um, I'll put the link into uh, that sheet that I, I create, but it's basically if you just type in KDP browse categories, it's just right here on the KDP FAQ page that everybody has access to. It's not hidden in any way, shape, or form. It's under prepare, publish, and then down here it says select your browse categories. 
but there's a little hidden gem on this page. Uh, let me make this page a little bigger. There's a hidden gem on this page. And when you scroll down, it says, how should I choose my categories? How do I add or update categories? Blah, blah, blah. And then it says categories with keyword requirements. To list your books in certain subcategories in Amazon and the UK, you'll need to add search keywords to the categories you choose. So if you're putting books in these categories, now it's not obvious where journals and notebooks will reside, but your journals and notebooks, if they're niched down properly, are going to uh, be used by children. They're going to be blank comic books. Uh, they're going to be music books. Uh, and they might have uh, some aspect of some or all of these different categories. So here's health and fitness. And I have it over here. When you click on this link, you have these keywords that Amazon wants you to actually put into your keyword research. You can put it in your title. You can put it in your keyword research on the back end. So this is health and family fitness. And if you're going to be doing something about longevity, uh, I probably, let's see, fitness walking. So you want to make sure you have the word walking. I think many of these as you start looking at them are quite obvious and common sense would dictate that you would probably be using these words um, in your research because they obviously, if I'm talking about ab workout, I'm going to have the word abs in it and I'll probably have the word workout and workouts in my back end keywords. But this is a really great little resource. They have it for romance books. They have it for literature. Um, so you kind of have to dig down in here to go and find out keywords that you're looking for. But I don't think it's really that hard because most of the keywords we want to use are common sense. What would you type in to find your book? A couple of the tools that I've talked about that I use are the Amazon AMZ Suggestion Expander. These are all Chrome extensions, so you must use Chrome to use them. Uh, the Suggestion Expander. Um, and I also use the uh, DS Amazon Quick View. And I also use Keywords everywhere. And when I have keywords everywhere, this is what it looks like when I do a search on a page. It populates and tells me all kinds of other keywords. So I put in workout planner here. I'm doing research. It tells me right here what the volume for that word is, keywords everywhere. And then it gives me all kinds of recommended keywords right here on the page. But the beautiful thing is, is when I'm on Amazon, and I put in fitness planner, you can begin to see how the tools that I mentioned work together because now I have the keyword expander, the suggestion expander, which is telling me the keywords that go before, peak, happy, health and fitness, me and my big ideas, and then the words that go after fitness planner, me and my big ideas. So me and my big ideas is probably trademarked in some way, um, but I would go and take a look at it. Fitness planner for women. That would be something I would search for fitness planner for men. So you're starting to begin to look for other keywords. Now I wouldn't use the word for in my backend keywords because that's a stop word that is unnecessary uh, for Amazon to have in the backend keywords. But again, my tools come together because I have my Amazon Keyword Exp Expander, Suggest Expander, and Keywords Everywhere is telling me how many times a month people search this. So when I click on that, 
I can see in Office products that there's 245 results. Now, my books are not going to be in Office products because we don't have access to be in Office products because that's a vendor category. We would go to books. And now I'm going to look and see Fitness Planner. Okay, there's 6,000 results for Fitness Planner. While there's 22,000 um, searches for it, 6,000 is probably a little bit high. Then I go and I click on Prime because I want to see really what my competitors are doing. And I'm going to click on Paperback to get rid of any of the hardback paperbacks or any of the hardback books and spiral books because I really kind of only want to look at the ones I'm in competition for that are from Create Space and KDP. Uh, there we go. I'm going to get rid of this include out of stock because that's not necessary because Amazon's never out of stock because it's print on demand. And so this is really gives me a great idea of what's here, what's selling, how well they're selling. And it also tells me when they publish this book. Now, when I have that other tool that I mentioned, which is the uh, DS Amazon Quick View Extended, I have the paid version. That's when I roll over these books, I don't have to go all the way to their sales page to get this information. So I can see exactly what their best sellers rank is. I can see that their create space and I can see how many pages it is. And I can see exactly what the dimensions are. You hear me talking all the time about how the niche determines how big, how many pages, what size, what categories. Now, one of the things that's happening here is Amazon is truncating these categories. So I can't really see all the categories. But if I click on that category, I now know exactly what really all the branch categories are because it's down here under medical books and this is the main category. So I can actually just drill down and find out what that category is. So I think Amazon's just working to clean up these big long dealy bobs here. So um, this is a value to me. Again, I'm being able to see all this because of the tool. So you won't see these unless you have these tools that I recommend. Um, let's go back to that page. So without belaboring this point, um, let's just move on. So now you know what the tools are that I've mentioned. And again, I talk about, um, I'm going to make a list of the tools that have links in them. Um, and that way you'll have one place to go to. Another tool that I like to use is called Sonar. And I talked about it a couple of weeks ago, but I really do like it. It's a free tool. Um, I've never abused my use of it. I only since I only look at one niche a week, I really only need to look at a few handful of words once I get down to the words that I want. And so then I only like put a couple of words in here and uh, take a look at them. And then I can download it, even though you can't see all these words right here. Uh, unlike some tools, if I just click on download, it actually gives me the entire list of all of these words. But I don't need all these words. And what I'll do is, you know, I'll, I only need fitness planner once. And so when I strip out all of these recurring keywords, I then get a very refined list of only words that don't repeat. Now, I know that that may stretch your brain. And this is a tool that I use called tracemyip.org. I basically just go to Google and type in remove duplicate words. And this tool comes up. I paste my keywords in here. And it gets rid of all the duplicate words. And then I go and I create 
the keywords like I showed you in here, and I don't have any duplicate keywords. Hopefully that I haven't lost you at that point because sometimes that gets a little confusing. Um, so just want to make sure that you understand we're not using keyword phrases like you would use if you're speaking to somebody when you're building your backend keywords. You don't want to duplicate words. You don't want to repeat them over. And that way you'll have maximized your 50 characters per line and 350 characters for all of these keywords. Just a couple of other tools. Uh, there's Uber Suggest, which is free, which is essentially a, um, a powerful version that pulls from uh, Google. Um, let's see, we're doing Fitness Planner. And it tells me my search volume. It tells me my SEO difficulty. Now, this is for Google, of course, and if I'm competing. But I really think that if you're going to be doing uh, Amazon keywords uh, for your ads, that this is probably still a fairly good indicator of uh, whether these words are going to be helpful in your once you get to the point of running ads. Uh, we can also see that there is obviously a trend. So he's pulling in from Google Trends. And so I know that most people are looking in January, which makes the most sense, right? And so we can see Google Trends, Google Trends. Um, so that's really kind of helpful. Um, and then he's uh, put in a whole bunch of different words right here. Planet Fitness. Um Meal planner, oh, that's a nice niche down word. It gets searched less, but these people are looking for something very specific. Um, and then he has some more uh, search engine analysis. And then keyword ideas. Oh, he's made some really nice changes to this, actually. Um, I'm going to have to come back and revisit this again. So uh, I have some more keyword ideas. He doesn't just give me a big, long list of words. He gives me some really good things to think about um, and some content ideas because he's a blogger. So I can see why uh, this has really changed a lot. So that's Uber Suggest from Neil Patel. Another one is Answer the Public, which is kind of a crazy one. And this weird old man is here. So if I put in fitness planner in this, then I actually get questions. And this is really cool because if you maybe instead of making a fitness planner like everybody else is, you can have a fitness planner prompter that really has some prompts in it that motivate people to ask certain questions. Let's see, Fitness Planner and Food Journal. And it also gives you more suggestions, Fitness Planner. Uh, let's see, and here's a bunch of different words. Again, because I have keywords everywhere, it's giving me all of these search. So I know that nobody's searching for some of these words. So some of these words, and that's unfortunately where a lot of people fall down is because they're putting in keywords and keyword phrases that literally nobody searches for, and then they wonder why their books aren't selling. It's because they're using keywords that literally nobody is looking for or phrases that nobody's looking for. So what this does is it breaks down, you know, sometimes you have seen where people go to Amazon suggest and it tells you to put in a word and then put in an A after it. Well, this does that for you. So this is fitness planner with A after it, fitness planner with B, C, all the way down to Z. Um, and so that's the alphabets. And then here's the related ones. And you can go from the top up here. You can click like this. Visualization is this layout right here. This will send you down to the next section fitness planners buy. So these are buying keywords and these are taking your prepositions for is without can 
um, that has the word can in it is with uh, then comparisons and so this is really fun to play around with um, I know that uh, sometimes it gives me questions and prompts that I can oftentimes use and you can download this CSV to use these for later. So this is kind of a fun one to play with. And so that's really the gist of all of it is when you are taking a look at your keywords, whoops, it's important to think about Who's going to consume your book? What would you, I mean, really it's common sense. What would you type in to find your book? I have some horse journals. So I went and I looked at the top horse breeds. And so I have all the top horse breeds in my back end book for my horse uh, prompt books, because people who are looking for different kinds of horses are going to be attracted to um, to find my book using those words. The uh, last one was called Answer the Public. That was what the last one was. Um, and so all of these tools, I don't want you to get overwhelmed because it can be overwhelming. But I also want you to know that search engine optimization, even though people have made it out to be this mystical thing that you need superpowers to really understand, that's why search engine optimization specialists get paid a lot of money because there is all this mystique behind picking the keywords, when in fact, it's really not that challenging. Now, what the challenging part is, is making sure you're picking phrases that people are actually looking for. So let's go back to the um, this one here. And this one is really helpful because it's giving me the information that I need to know. So many of these phrases are not even searched for. Fitness planner bullet journal. How many of you are making bullet journals for fitness planners thinking that all these people are going to come and get it? Well, nobody searches for that. Just so you know, not one search, nowhere, anywhere. So when you're making this investment, especially when you're looking to title your book, if you titled the book fitness planner bullet journal, because you thought it was really cool, uh, nobody's going to, and then you wonder why it's not selling. It's because nobody's looking for a fitness planner bullet journal. They, they're not searching for it. Um, and so going down and diving down now, don't be afraid when you see something that is low search, like 20 people a month, this is fitness planner, do it yourself. Um, and fitness planner diary, that means that a very specific group of people are searching for something and they're searching for something. And most likely when it gets down to small numbers like that, they're ready to buy something that really appeals to them. Um, visual fitness planner download. Okay. Those are downloadables. That would be something if you had an Etsy store, then that might be a word when you have the word downloadables. Um, and so it's just fun to uh, go through this and um, fitness planner for beginners. Now you'd think that that would get searched fitness planner for beginners, but not really. It's not coming up. Um, so it just really helps you fitness health planner. Now that gets searched quite a lot. Uh Happy Planner is, I'm pretty sure, trademarked. So you want to be careful if you're going to use this. You could use the Happy Planner on your back end keywords, but you can't use it in your title. And I wouldn't use it in my description, though you could probably get away with it in your description. But Amazon does not use descriptions for their search. But when it gets into Google, um, that becomes a, a different factor. Fitness Planner Ideas. Um, that's a good one. So you could have a book 
that has different fitness planner prompts and call it fitness planner ideas and each page maybe has a new or different exercise, 52 weeks of fitness planner ideas and each page could have a different idea for them to do and then a daily journal for what they did when they did it, how many reps they did for it, you know, those kinds of things. So that's where that word would come in. Um, fitness planner journal searched 40 times a month. So that's uh, worthwhile to take a look at. Um, fitness planner layout. Uh, that would be if you're going to sell templates about fitness planners, that might be a good word to use. Uh, Planet Fitness, again, trademarked. Uh, Michael's, that's a store. Me and my big ideas, obviously, I think, again, that's a fitness planner template. Here's another one. So if you're doing templates and selling them, fitness meal planner. Now, that is the one that I think is the winner. It's got 380 searches a month. And let's see how many people have already done this one. Fitness. Oh, now this is pretty promising. Fitness meal planner. So this is 380. It's got 2,000 results. So it's a lot less than the 60 results, 6,000 results of the other one. And maybe what I would do is niche it down just a little bit more. Um, fitness meal planner for keto diet. So I'd have the keyword in the beginning and then have keto diet planner. And so then I bring two keywords together that probably get searched. So uh, keto diet planner. Let's see how much that gets searched. Do, 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 do. So that's a nice mashup. You hear people talking about mashups, and that's taking one big popular phrase and mashing it with another popular phrase. So you could have fitness meal planner, keto, uh, I, I wouldn't use planner again, uh, keto diet plan um, for beginners. And so maybe I would have that mashup together. And even though you might, uh, and KDP isn't gonna say your keyword stuffing because that's exactly what your planner is about, right? So you're taking two mashups and putting it together. And then I would find some other good words to put into my, um, my subtitle right here without making it too spammy. Okay. So you can get away with saying 90 days of meal and weight loss, a hundred, uh, 52 week meal planning, um, for men. Um, those things are specific about your book and so allow you to say those things. If it's a prompt, you could say 185 prompts, um, 185 pages of daily prompts. So you could get away with saying that without KDP flags going up saying that's too spammy. So I've probably said enough for your brains to explode at this point in time. Um, I'll make a quick list and put it into the group um, and I will put it in the file section and I'll link it in the unit section under doing research so that everybody can get these links and have them all in one place. So they're easy to find because at the end of the day, we can sit and we can create. Um, let me come back on. At the end of the day, we can sit and we can create beautiful journals and take all the time um, to make these wonderful covers and uh, make these great interiors. But if we're not doing that next added step, and that's where many of these courses that are taught leave that part out. They just show people how to create the books, but they really don't talk about the meat and potatoes, which is the keywords how to make your titles, how to make your subtitles so that they're found and how to use those keywords in the back end again, to make sure that your books are selling all those three components 
together with having a nice looking cover are the ones that are going to be the juggernaut to really help push your books into the selling versus not selling category. So that's my brain dump for you today. And come back and watch this again a few times. Um, again, I don't want you to spend a ton of time doing keyword research. Most of it, once you start getting used to it, and also once you start writing a bunch of journals, I keep my keywords in a, in a text document. So when I make a book for that category again, like a devotional journal, I can go back and use pretty much the same keywords again with very little change. So you don't have to keep researching the same thing over and over again. If you're making a Christian Bible devotional, guess what? You really don't have to keep researching that term. You just use the same words over and over again because unless something has changed, people are going to look for that book using the same words. So use common sense. And that's another reason why I say save one day to research one niche a week so that you don't go down a rabbit hole, which ends up making you frustrated, losing momentum and getting, you know, crazy. And if you see keywords, like we were just looking on that, uh, this, this uh, answer the public thing, when you start seeing keywords, you can download this document, the CSV to keep for another date and go back and revisit. What I do is I would download this CSV. I literally would get rid of everything that has zero search because you'll have a column that says zero search. And I literally would get rid of everything that has zero search and just focus on the terms that actually have numbers. Um, and then that gives me ideas. Next time I want to do another fitness planner, boom, I have my research done. I go back to my folder that says fitness planner research. I'll go in there pull out some of those ideas and I'll make a whole nother set of fitness planners and I don't have to do that initial research. So saving yourself time by chunking and bringing those categories together. So I hope you have a great day and